in this session i am going to discuss a very important topic that's amyloidosis let's start amyloidosis so before understanding the pathogenesis you must understand the definition of the amyloidosis what is amyloidosis actually the amyloidosis is a disease in which in some individuals in some persons an abnormal protein is formed the name of that protein is amyloid amyloid is not a usual normal protein it's an abnormal protein what is abnormality in that it is insoluble there is some problem in its secondary structure you know proteins have three structure the primary secondary and tertiary so there is some problem in the secondary structure because of which it is insoluble and it get deposited extracellularly so it will compress the cells in multiple human organs causing a disease known as amyloidosis so that organ undergo failure can you see here in this diagram you can see this is the brain this is a normal brain you can see the neurons you can see these are the neurons the functioning neurons in the second disease you can see alzheimer's disease in which the patient is having amyloidosis also in between the neurons you can see this is amyloid plaques which is getting deposited extracellularly and compressing the neurons they are compressing the neurons so causing the failure of that particular organ and causing the disease so that is amyloidosis so basically it's a disease having a abnormal protein the name of that protein is amyloid the amyloid have some problem in its secondary structure that's why it's insoluble and because of which it get deposited in the extracellular matrix causing compression of the cell causing organ failure and it's a multi organ disease coming on the physical nature of the amyloid in the physical nature of the amyloid you have to learn two things number 1 what is the structure on electron microscopy and number 2 what is the structure on x ray crystallography and uh, infrared uh, spectrometry so tell me the structure on electron microscopy first on electron microscopy can you see here it is forming non branching elongated fibrils these are non branching elongated fibrils having infinite length the length is indefinite it's infinite but what is the diameter the maximum diameter is 7.5 to 10 nanometer so you have to learn these are the fibrils number one these are elongated these are non branching they have indefinite length and the diameter is 7.5 to 10 nanometer that's electron microscopy now coming on x ray crystallography and infrared spectrometry on x ray crystallography or infrared spectrometry you can see it is forming a beta pleated sheet structure this is a sheet it is known as cross beta pleated sheet structure so that is x ray crystallography many mcqs come on the physical nature but you should be specific what is the nature on electron microscopy and how it is seen on x ray crystallography and infrared spectrometry both are different you can see the two diagrams in front of you that is the physical nature of the amyloid now i am coming on the chemical nature of the amyloid coming on the chemical nature of amyloid in chemical nature of amyloid there are two main type of amyloid a l a a let me tell you the full form a l stands for amyloid light chain a l amyloid light chain and a a stands for amyloid associated protein so you should know the full form these are the two main amyloid and apart from which there is a list of others so we will see all of them one by one let's start with the first one a l why a l is known as a l because actually it is seen in the patients with plasma cell dyscrasia like multiple myeloma what is the problem in a patient with multiple myeloma in multiple myeloma the patient have abnormal mutated b cells b lymphocytes so the plasma cells formed from the b cells are abnormal what is the abnormality in them normal plasma cells form immunoglobulin having two light chains and two heavy chains like this these are the two light chains these are the two heavy chains but here in multiple myeloma the plasma cells are abnormal they are mutated so they produce only light chain no heavy chain i cannot call them as immunoglobulin because they are only light chain i will call them light chain protein right now these light chain protein are excessive and the macrophage will try to degrade them but the macrophage will cause partial degradation of these light chain because they are abnormal so only partially degraded light chain is forming al type of amyloid so this is how al type of amyloid is formed so basically that's why it is known as amyloid light chain because the main composition is the light chain which is partially degraded so these are the immunoglobulin light chain they are of two type kappa and lambda and it is seen in multiple myeloma these are the primary systemic amyloidosis it is included in primary right the second type is the aa the second type is the aa in aa what is the problem the person is having some chronic inflammatory disorder like tuberculosis rheumatoid arthritis any chronic order disorder so in the chronic disorders the macrophage get activated 
macrophage secretes certain cytokines in all chronic disorders that cytokine stimulates the liver and liver will produce a protein known as serum associated amyloid saa serum associated amyloid is produced saa is produced from the liver right in all chronic disorders now this saa is partially degraded by the macrophage right so partially degraded saa will form the aa right that's why it is known as amyloid associated protein it is a form of secondary amyloidosis because the primary disease is something else the primary disease is the main chronic inflammatory disease and because of which it is happening that's why it is known as secondary amyloidosis now coming on the list of others we have done with primary we have done with secondary now coming on the list of others 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 amyloid protein so let me tell you the list it's a beta 2 microglobin a beta 2 microglobulin where the trigger now in al the trigger is the multiple myeloma or plasma cell dyscrasia in aa the trigger is chronic inflammatory disorder now every amyloidosis require a trigger right so here if the trigger is hemodialysis imagine a patient having bilateral renal failure so what will happen bilateral renal the kidneys are not non functional so patient will be on dialysis for many years so dialysis is the trigger hemodialysis it will it will result in a beta 2 microglobulin a beta 2 microglobulin type of amyloid familial mediterranean fever again result in aa type of amyloid the familial polyneuropathies or senile cardiomyopathy results in attr what is the full form of attr it's amyloid transthyrin ttr transthyrin ttr attr type of amyloid alzheimer's disease results in a beta a beta type of amyloid spongiform encephalopathy results in a prion type of amyloid medullary carcinoma of thyroid results in a calcitonin a calcitonin this is it is written reverse this is a calcitonin type of amyloid in diabetes type 2 diabetes it's a insulin islet amyloid polypeptide type of amyloid so this is how these are the triggers and these are the type of amyloid on them you have to learn this list you cannot skip it now coming on the diagnosis of the amyloid for diagnosing amyloid we should do a biopsy but the point is that from where we should do a biopsy there is no blood test to diagnose amyloid so biopsy now it is a multi organ disease now amyloid get deposited throughout the body in multiple organs so the best site of biopsy are two number one rectum and number two abdominal fat pad can you see this is abdominal fat pad so abdominal fat pad or rectum are the two sites of the biopsy it's a very important mcq apart from which the biopsy can be done from salivary gland gingiva skin tongue bone marrow stomach other sites also right now coming on the staining characteristics after doing biopsy apply five stains one by one the the five stains are hne hematoxylin and eosin that is the second is the uh, methyl violet and crystal violet congo red is the most specific stain for amyloid thioflavin t and s that is fluorescent stains and last is immunohistochemistry let me give you the discussion of these okay uh, on hne the amyloid will look pink red pink pinkish haline homogeneous in color on um, metachromatic stains like methyl violet and crystal violet also it is rose pink in color but congo red is unique it's unique on congo red if you see under visible light it will be pink red in color but if you see under polarized light it will be like apple green by fringes let me show you so these both are congo red here also there is congo red and here also it's congo red if you see the congo red under visible light under normal light microscope right so can you see the pink color here can you appreciate if you can appreciate if you can appreciate all this pink color is amyloid so on light my on light microscopy in visible light it's pink in color on congo red but if you apply a polarizer if you are applying a polarizer the same slide looks like this can you see wherever it was red it is green now wherever it was red the same corresponding areas they are green now you can appreciate the red areas converted to apple green so both are congo red this is also congo red this is also congo red but this is visible light and this is polarized light how to convert the light microscope into a polarized light the visible light into polarized light so in a light microscope the bulb here the bulb is providing the visible light so a polarizer is available if you apply the polarizer at the source the light will become polarized and on polarized i have told you it is apple green color apple green by fringes so congo red is the best to distinguish it is the best stain uh, it is the most specific stain for diagnosing of amyloid not only this we can distinguish al and aa type of amyloid based on congo red so after staining with congo red you apply permanganate 
you apply permanganate. If Congo red positivity is retained, its primary amyloid that is AL type. If it is not trained, retained, it is it turns negative, so it is secondary amyloid AA type. So this is how you can differentiate AL and AA based on Congo red and after applying permanganate, whether it is retaining or turning negative, you can decide whether it is AA type or AL type. So this is how Congo red is ultra important stain for the amyloid. Coming on the organs which are affected in amyloid, right? The first organ which I would like to discuss here is the kidneys. Kidney is the most common and most serious form of organ involved in amyloid. Most common also, most serious also. In the kidney, the basement membrane, the glomerular basement membrane is affected, GBM. Glomerular basement membrane got thickened because of deposition of amyloid there. So, there is a disease in the glomerulus. That's why patient will lose protein in the urine because glomerular membrane is damaged. So, there is proteinuria resulting in nephrotic syndrome. So, whenever there is amyloidosis in kidney, patient results, the kidney results in nephrotic syndrome because patient loses abundant proteins in the urine because the glomerular basement membrane is damaged. Can you see here in this diagram? This is a glomerulus. Inside the glomerulus, can you appreciate the pink color everywhere? The pink color is the basement membrane which got thickened because of deposition of amyloid on that. Right? So, it is looking pink like. The same diagram, here it is visible light on Congo red and here this is polarized light. So whatever the pink color was there, it converts into apple green. The corresponding areas you can see, right? So this is the confirmation. The second organ to be discussed here is the spleen. In the spleen, there are two follicles, the red, uh, the, the two pulps, the red pulp and the white pulp. Now if amyloid is deposited in white pulp, that is splenic follicles, it is known as sago spleen. If amyloid is deposited in red pulp, that is sinuses, it is known as lordosius pain. Let me show you. So can you see, in this diagram, the amyloid is deposited here. Can you see, it's looking like sago, sago grains. So here the amyloid is deposited in white pulp, in white pulp. And can you see here, the amyloid is deposited everywhere in the red pulp, red pulp. So here, white pulp is looking like a sago grains and red pulp is lordosius big in size right so you can see it here so that's all about amyloidosis i hope you learned it you understood it what is amyloid what is the pathogenesis of amyloid what are the types of amyloid and uh, uh, what is the diagnosis the special stain the congo red right and what are the organs affected the important organs are the kidney and the spleen so that's all about amyloidosis try all mcqs based on that thank you